Algebra 2 notes law of sines to solve non-right triangles. Start by writing in the definition of the law of sines. It is a formula to solve non-right triangles when certain information is known. In a minute, we'll look specifically at the formula. So the information that we can know about a triangle um, is shown in the graphic below. So if we know two angles in a non-included side, two angles and an included side, or two sides and a non-included angle, then we can use the law of sines to solve it. So for example, angle, angle, side would look something like this. So consecutively, that's what we would know. That means we have enough information to use the law of sines to solve the triangle. Find out all the rest of the angles and sides. This would be angle, side, angle, looking consecutively about what we know. And then this would be side, side, angle. Now look on your note sheet, <clears throat> just down below a little bit at the law of sines graphic. So you can see the law of sines given here. It's a very versatile formula. Um, basically, it is the ratio of the sine of the angle compared to its side length. And so you can use whatever two parts of the formula that you need to use to solve. You can also, if you're solving for side lengths, you can use the reciprocal, so where it has the side lengths on top compared to the sine of the angles. So let's go ahead and start. So number one, case one where we have two angles and a side, either an included or a non-included side. So in this triangle in particular, if we look consecutively of what we know of the triangle, we know angle, and then we know the next angle around the triangle, and then side. Now to solve, we're gonna find out all the things that we still need to know about this triangle. So we need to know the angle A, and then side A and C. So put a box around that, and then when that graphic is filled in, you know that you're done um, solving the problem. So to find angle A, subtract the other two from 180, and that's 48 degrees. Now let's start alphabetically, <laughs> and let's just solve for side A. So A over the sine of angle A, which is the sine of 48 degrees, equals, and then we'll use the side length that we know, 15, over the sine of 25 degrees. So to solve for A, we need to multiply by what's in the denominator here. So what you'll end up doing, take your calculator, take 15, divide it by the sine of 25, press enter, and then multiply by the sine of 48. And let's round to one's place. So length A is 26. Now let's set up and solve for side C. So C compared to the sine of angle C, which is 107. And then we'll use that side length and angle that we were given. So we need to multiply the left side by the denominator. Pick up your calculator. Take 15, divide it by the side of 25, press enter, and then times the sine of 107. So to one's place, C is 34. Now let's look at example two. And let's put some labels on our triangle. So let's label this top angle A. This one is B and this one is C. With non-right triangles, it doesn't matter which angle is measured with which letter. And then let's measure, or sorry, label the side lengths. So A is 100, because it's across from angle A. We don't know side B, and we don't know side C. So let's make a list of everything that we need to know to solve this triangle. So we need to know angle C, we need to know side B, and side C. So we'll take 180 and we'll subtract off the other two angles, subtract off 140 and 21. And so angle C is 19 degrees. Now let's just start alphabetically. So B compared to the sine of angle B equals, and then we'll use the side length that we know, which is 100, over the angle that it corresponds with, which is 21. So we'll end up multiplying both sides by the denominator on the left, like usual. So 100 divided by the sine of 21 
times the sine of 140. And then let's round to one's place, so 179. Now let's just keep going and let's solve for side C. So C compared to angle C, which we know is 19, so that'd be the sine of 19 equals, and then 100 over the sine of 21. So we'll multiply both sides by the sine of 19. And our side length will be 91. And then let's just check for reasonableness. So 19 degrees, that's a small angle, and the side length is 91. And then um, angle B is much bigger, 140 degrees, and side B is much bigger than 91. So these measurements sound reasonable. Let's keep on moving. Now we've got <clears throat> case two. So this is when we know two sides and one angle that is not included. So let's just draw this triangle. And mine will not be to scale, most likely. <laughs> so just bear with me. So A, B, and C. Angle A is 115. Side A is 20, so that's across from that angle. Side B is 11, and that's all we know. And if you look, you can see consecutively, I'm gonna use red, we know this side, this side, and that angle. So this is side, side, angle. But that is still enough information to use the law of sines to solve this triangle. And then let's label this side C. All right, so we need to know angle B, we need to know angle C, and we need to know side C. Okay, so we'll get ready to solve. So since we know side B, let's start by solving angle B. So we're gonna use the form of the formula that has the angle measure on top. So the sine of B over the side length of B, which is 11, and then we'll compare that to the sine of the angle. So we have to have angle measures on top and side lengths both on the bottom. And our solve will be the same. We're gonna multiply both sides by what's on the denominator. So sine of 115, make sure you close your parentheses, divide it by 20, press enter, and then multiply by 11. Now this is not <clears throat> the angle measure. This is the sine of the angle, that ratio. And so I'm putting three dots because I am not gonna round. I'm gonna leave that in my calculator. Now you need to use the inverse function button on your calculator. So you're gonna press second and then sine. And you'll see this come up on your calculator screen. Then you need to pull back the answer. So you're gonna press second negative and you're gonna see this. So that means it's gonna pull in that decimal and you press enter, and that is the angle measure whose sine is about 0.498, etc. So let's fill in that angle, 30 degrees. Now let's subtract 30 degrees and 115 from 180, and angle C is 35 degrees. Lastly, we can go back to the law of sines again. I'm gonna draw a line here to solve for side C. So C, now we put the side length on top because that's what we're solving for, over the sine of angle C. And then we'll use that given pair that we were told, so side length 20 over the sine of 115. We'll multiply by what's on the denominator. So 20 divided by the sine of 115 times the sine of 35. So C is 13, and you can check for reasonableness for these measurements. All right, let's try one more triangle. Now we've got a situation where we know two sides <clears throat> and a non-included angle again. I can see that on side, side, angle. So I'm gonna let this be A, this be B, and this be C. So this is side A is 44, side B is 40, 
and side C is an unknown. So we need to find angle B and angle C and side C. Okay, set up this graphic. So we can find, um, let's start, since we know side B, let's start with angle B. So we'll say the sine of angle B over 40 equals the sine of our given angle, 63, over the side length, 44. So multiply both sides by 40, just to get rid of that. And then just take the sine of 63, close your parentheses, divide it by 44, and then take it times 40. Now remember, this is the sine of the angle. So 0 0.810, I'm keeping it in my calculator. Do second and your sine button, and then pull back that answer. to find out that angle B is 54 degrees. Now subtract 54 and 63 from 180 to find out that angle C is also 63 degrees. <clears throat> so side length C, we could go ahead and solve for it, but it is going to be the same measure as side A because Angle A is also 63 degrees, so we've got a length of 44. You can go ahead and set up that law of sines equation and solve it and find out, but that is what it's going to be. Now let's look at this real life situation. So a helicopter is hovering between two helicopter pads. The pilot knows that she flew into the air at a 70 degree angle to get to her current position. She also knows that the two pads are 50,000 feet apart. She wants to practice her descent so that she comes in to land at a 65 degree angle. So let's draw this triangle. So here, the two landing pads are 50,000 feet apart. We know that the helicopter, she took off, and we'll say from the pad on the left, at a 70 degree angle. And then she wants to have her descent so that she comes in at a 65 degree angle. So how many feet would she have to travel to descend to that 65 degree angle? So that is the length that we're looking for. So we know angle, side angle, and we can figure out um, what we are missing. Let's find the third angle. So if you take 180 and subtract 70 and 65, you will get 45 degrees. Let's set up now our law of sines equation. So x over the sine of 70 equals my side length of 50,000 over the sine of 45. So again, you're going to multiply both sides by the sine of 70, because that's what's in our denominator on the left. So 50,000 divided by the sine of 45, enter, times the sine of 70. So it looks like that helicopter is going to be flying about 66,446 feet. All right, now you want to pause your video and do the independent practice that's in your notes packet. <clears throat> Once you're done, then you need to sign up for the teacher talk and review your work and your answers during the teacher talk.